Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crowley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. When we first heard about this mystery illness coming over and making its way uh, ashore America, we were all baffled. Well, we've learned some stuff in the last 12 months. And to talk about that today, Dr. Peter McCullough and Dr. Al Johnson, uh, returning guests to our show, uh, both uh, national thought leaders on this. Let's start with you, Dr. McCullough. What, what have we learned about this mysterious illness? Well, we've learned a, a great deal over the last year. I'd say about a year ago, I think most doctors didn't have any foundations on an approach for treatment. And now early treatment has come really in full form. We have an array of uh, drugs and treatments. One of the most powerful are the infusion of the specific antibodies against the virus, followed by other drugs that reduce uh, the uh, infection itself, uh, the inflammation, so we use corticosteroids, uh, and then following the blood clotting, we use forms of blood thinners. These principles are used in the hospital, uh, and we extend them now to early at home to prevent hospitalization uh, and death. And that really is key, isn't it, Dr. McCullough, that if you treat them early enough, often they never have to go to the hospital. Sure. There are now uh, published studies, uh, one from New York, one from a DFW area, showing early multi-drug treatment has an 85% reduction in hospitalization and death. And so we don't want to see any high-risk patient go with no treatment for two weeks at home and then be hospitalized on their last gasp. It doesn't need to happen. It's a very important public health message that COVID-19 is a treatable illness. Well, all three of us had COVID-19. We don't mind sharing that with the, with the viewer. And each one of us had uh, different experiences. Uh, Dr. Johnson, you, you uh, contracted it uh, what, a month ago? Yes. And, and what was your experience? Well, my experience was uh, significant. Uh, I started with fatigue, uh, kind of chills. Uh, I started early treatment. I contacted a new Dr. McCulloch uh, prior, and uh, we I began early treatment with, in my case, uh, zithromycin, hydroxychloroquine, the nutrients, zinc, uh, lysine, vitamin D, and uh, then as soon as I got my positive PCR test back uh, for COVID from a sputum PCR test, uh, I applied and was accepted to get the monoclonal antibody infusion with Dr. McCullough talked about. Um, unfortunately, I got it a little fast and had a cytokine reaction, which exacerbated my symptoms. Uh, and um, I was hospitalized for a couple of days on oxygen for uh, 24 hours, and then I was fine, received remdesivir IV in the hospital, uh, and then discharged on uh, after two nights stay. Um, so I feel real fortunate that uh, Dr. McCullough is here promoting early treatment. Um, I then, uh, because of some pul continued pulmonary problems that he was talking about, I was short of breath, had pulmonary infiltrates on CT scan, uh, continued on hydroxychloroquine, continued on some prednisone, um, and every day I uh, became better. I was PCR negative sputum for COVID on day 12. Uh, so I was not uh, carrying it any longer. Uh, since then, I've, I've gone on a rehab program, uh, which uh, has helped my body cells, lungs, brain, tissues recover. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's uh, basically my story. And I'm grateful for Dr. McCullough and those that um, are proponents of early treatment. It works. It's important that it started early. Um, I started it with first symptoms. 
And frankly, I'd been on uh, preventive uh, with all the nutrients and with hydroxychloroquine uh, on a weekly basis before. If I hadn't done that, I'm sure my case would have been a lot worse. Yeah, Dr. McCullough, just observations on uh, Dr. Johnson's experience and had he not been on uh, supplementation and had he not gotten early treatment, uh, his uh, result could have been much different. Sure. So I think what the listeners really should uh, understand is that the outcomes are very tightly related to age. So uh, not to put Dr. Johnson on the spot, but he is older than we are. And um, he faced uh, almost certainly uh, going on the mechanical ventilator with his degree of pulmonary involvement. And he faced a very high mortality. I mean, the stakes are very high here. If people heard about these statistics, we have 550,000 Americans who have lost their lives. Our estimates are if treatment would have been started early, we could have prevented about 85% of those deaths, but it takes about four to six drugs used in sequence. And as Dr. Johnson pointed out, it's, it's rough. Now, uh, I've had patients in, in the hospital for four and five weeks. We, he did uh, require hospitalization, but it was just a couple days. And we did use a lot of drugs to be intensive with our therapy uh, is rewarding. Now, you have been called on to, to speak in Austin. We've got some video from that. Why don't you tell us about your testimony in Austin? Well, I was uh, one of two physicians. I was along with Dr. Richard Urso, uh, who's an esteemed doctor from uh, Baylor College of Medicine uh, down in uh, Houston. And we testified to the importance of early treatment. And uh, one of the points we wanted to make is there's been such a, a, a focus on masks and, and contagion control, now a focus on vaccination. What we've said is that we've lost focus on the problem right in front of us, which is the sick patient. We still have 45,000 Americans getting sick every day. And in my view is they should, they should have always been and should be today our main focal point. We should be having updates on the news continuously with respect to how to get medical treatment, what patients should do, because treatment at home reduces spread of the illness because patients don't go out and panic and spread it all over. Uh, it reduces hospitalization and death. And so what came out of the testimony is proposed legislation that as each patient gets a positive COVID test result, they get some information on treatment, not only the at-home nutraceuticals, risk stratification, who would need treatment based on age and medical problems, and then where to get that treatment uh, with respect to prescription uh, medications and antibody infusions. Dr. Johnson, let's bring you back in. Uh, it seems like there's been a lot of confusion over advice. I mean, in the early days, I remember Dr. Fauci was saying, don't wear a mask, and now we're supposed to wear a mask. And, and where does the all of the you know, misinformation come from? That's a very good question. Um, I think you're dealing with a group of researchers that really hadn't been in the clinical forefront on how to take care of patients, or what really matters as he was talking about. And so they were trying to uh, come up with ways to tell people how to protect themselves, even though they really didn't have good data to base it on. Um, and so you get a bunch of misinformation, change of information, change of ideas, and change of thought processes. Uh, you know, it was a crisis, but they got defocused, as he was saying, not on early treatment. This is the only disease process in my lifetime, I've practiced in 45 years, that early treatment was not there. There was no one saying, we need to treat these people early, you need to figure out what's going on. And, and it wasn't there. Just this, this week, I had a patient come in with GI complaints. He said, I feel horrible. Uh, my stomach's all upset. I went to the urgent care. They ran a COVID test on me. It was a quick COVID test. Said I was negative. I said, well, you sound like you have COVID. I ran an antibody test. And sure enough, he was IgM, IgG, antibody positive. And all he had was GI symptoms and just feeling bad. So a high level of suspicion running appropriate tests, and then early treatment is important. And it's, it got waylaid with all these other extraneous factors and not paying attention to common sense. You know, you don't put sick COVID patients back with healthy patients once they get it, you know, when they're sick. So uh, Dr. that's a big problem. Yeah, you know, yesterday we heard the um, uh, 
representative from the CDC uh, saying that uh, she has a uh, really bad feeling that uh, we may, may be slipping back into uh, you know, another wave. Um, and then you have these states like Texas where it's like, come on, let's, let's get out. Let's, let's go to the movies again. Uh, you know, what should we believe? Well, I think one of the shortcomings has been, I, I think we have, I agree with Dr. Johnson, that, that our federal agencies uh, really been driven by fear and uncertainty. You can't blame it. It's human nature. You know, doctors, there's no checkbox for doctors to, to assess our courageousness when we go to medical school. And what we found out is some doctors are very courageous. They stepped out of the box. They became leaders in treatment. And a lot of doctors and even big medical centers uh, went to the sidelines. They, they honestly have not uh, promulgated any uh, treatment protocols. We don't hear about any world-class U.S. institutions and having, uh, you know, the the blue ribbon treatment protocol. It's really the American Association of Physician and Surgeons, uh, guided by myself, Dr. Johnson, and others that have devised the uh, outpatient treatment program for the country. Now, uh, among the CDC, NIH, FDA, White House task force, they haven't had a single or media doctors. They haven't had a single doctor that's actually ever treated a single COVID patient. So if they, if they are lacking that expertise, of course, they're going to be focusing on masks or focusing on some other issue and not focusing on the patient right in front of you. So we get a lot of uh, confusing information with respect to the future. We know that we have uh, 330 million uh, Americans and uh, maybe there's another 30 more that are DACA or not so well uh, documented. Uh, we've had, uh, I believe, 30 million proven infections. The CDC multiplier is about six, meaning there are sixfold as many people who have had COVID that, um, in fact, never got the test. And the experts believe about 15% of the population truly are not susceptible. So when you put all those fractions together, I testified in Texas for the Texas Senate on March 10th, at that time, I testified based on that CDC equation that we are at 80% herd immunity. So that means that only 20% of people really could get it. Now, 20% is a big number, and, but that means the spread's going to start to slow down. That uh, do we still need to be cautious and prudent? Yes. But if we continue, Texas is an early treating state. We have 35 early treatment centers uh, here in Texas. Uh, we've been way ahead of the curve. And even though we have a large state and we never lock down, our current ranking in terms of cases and deaths per million population in the U.S. is right at 24. You know, Florida never shut down either. And they're about middle of the pack. So the, the states that had draconian lockdowns really weren't rewarded with better statistics. What do you, what do you see for how the virus keeps mutating and we hear about different strains? And is, is that something to be concerned about? Will, will we ever put this in the rearview mirror? We will. And I think what the listeners should understand is that it's very hard to find the entire virus in the nose. So a lot of people uh, listening to this show have actually had the test in their nose and their mouth. We can only pick up fragments of the virus there. The fragment, the virus is recovered in, in, in its complete form in the GI tract, believe it or not. So the Chinese do anal swabs, believe, believe it or not. And there are research programs that test it uh, in the stool. And in fact, what's been shown is we've always had maybe six to 10 different strains circulating around the United States. So, so the strain that you got, you mentioned you were pretty mild. He had a more severe case. I was middle of the road. I needed some medications and had some lung involvement. We may have had different strains. We may have had different inoculum, meaning a different dose that we breathed in uh, to get the virus. But we've always had different strains. Um, so uh, there is a robustness to natural immunity. So even if a different strain uh, comes into the United States, once you've already had the infection, uh, you're, there, there is a resilience to reinfection. Um, we've only got a couple minutes left. Dr. Johnson, uh, just in terms of going forward, uh, do you recommend masks? Do you recommend kind of pre preventatively taking lysine and vitamin C and vitamin D? Yes, that all makes sense. Definitely to help your body's immune system uh, to be at its maximum function aspect. One of the other things that we want to talk about just briefly and can do another program on is what they call the long haulers. Those people who've had COVID and continue to have symptoms. Uh, you know, I was discharged from the hospital and said, uh, kind of uh, good luck if you need, uh, your oxygen sat goes down, you need oxygen call us. Uh, and a lot of people I talk to have that same experience, but they continue to have headaches 
They continue to have fatigue. They continue to have shortness of breath. And what do you do about that? Uh, over my 40 years of, of treatment of people, I've treated chronic disease. And one of the things when you're hypoxic, low in oxygen, your cells shut down. They're damaged. They aren't dead, but they're damaged. And the only way to recover those is with hyperbaric oxygen treatment. Uh, we use it for carbon monoxide poisoning. We use it for near drownings. We use it for diabetic wounds. Um, and I've done it myself. I've treated other COVID patients uh, in the recovery phase uh, where they get marked improvement with the hyperbaric oxygen. And then we add other physical rehab modalities to it, whether it's lung exercises, walking. Dr. McCullough is a big proponent of getting outside, uh, getting fresh air, uh, getting your lungs clear. Uh, so those are things that we'll be talking about at a later date on, on repair, retrain the body, and then reevaluate on a weekly basis how that rehab program is going. Uh, Dr. McCullough, we'll give you the final word. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about having COVID brain, just a little brain fog. Uh, I hear things about um, uh, COVID possibly damaging your heart. Um, are there some things that people need to worry about if they've had COVID? And, um, you know, can they get back to 100% again? Well, those are real observations. So everything you said is true. But the risk predictors are uh, severe symptoms and hospitalization, and that happened with uh, Dr. Johnson, and I think long untreated periods. So what we don't wanna see is a patient develop COVID, go for two weeks at home, and then go into the hospital gasping for air. That person is a setup to develop these long COVID syndromes, about 50% of them uh, based on blood testing for a blood test called troponin, actually have some evidence of cardiac uh, injury. We don't know how to treat long COVID at this point in time, uh, using various anti-inflammatories, steroids, immune modulating drugs, uh, hyperbaric oxygen, all are being uh, developed. Uh, there are clinics opening at major medical centers uh, in order to try to tackle the issue of long COVID. I think patients and doctors should take it seriously. It's a, it's a new post-infectious uh, syndrome. Uh, we have a lot to learn, but I think the outcome is bright. bright. I'm predicting we are going to close out this pandemic. We probably will be wearing masks and taking prudent measures for quite some time in the future. And uh, I'm personally fine with that as we move forward. Outstanding. We're going to have to have you both back soon. Let's kind of end with our website, aapsonline.org. It's a, it's a uh, website that both of you recommend for the most current information. Thank you both for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it for me. We'll see you next time. Thank you.